Hi, welcome to Voice Bootcamp. My name is Faisal Khan, Cisco Collaboration Instructor at voicebootcamp.com. In this video, we're going to focus on implementing Cisco, uh, implementing and operating Cisco Collaboration Core Technologies. Now, this particular course was designed to help you prepare for Cisco CCNP Collaboration and CCIE Collaboration Certifications. Also focus on advanced uh, level roles, implementation and operation of your collaboration solutions. Now, when using this particular course, you will gain knowledge and skills that are needed to implement and deploy core collaboration and network technologies, including uh, infrastructure configurations, design protocols, selecting the right codecs, and of course, configuring and managing the endpoints. You will also learn how to use your existing knowledge of Cisco Internet Working Operating System, or AKA IOS, XC Gateway, to interconnect view IP network with the PSTN or old telephony system. You will also learn how to configure media resources to provide conferencing, transcoding, or media termination point interoperability. Uh, you will uh, configure call control to register phones, configure numbers, addressing endpoints using both numbers and URI. Quality of service and additional application will be covered to ensure that you have a full end-to-end -end solution with Cisco collaboration, uh, collaboration technologies. Now, this particular course was help, designed to help you pre prepare for you to take the exam. And that exam would be uh, Cisco Collaboration Core Technologies, or CL Core. Uh, number, I believe, is 350-801. Now, that is, this particular core uh, exam is a mandatory and requirement to become a CCNP Collaboration Certified or CCI Collaboration Written Exam. Now, it can also be required in some Cisco Certified Specialist core certifications that are available within Cisco training uh, certification and training. Now, one of the first thing we're going to look at is the architecture. Now, here you will see that Cisco, what a Cisco sol collaboration solution architecture looks like. In this section, you will explore the various aspects of your collaboration and element necessary to understand, deploy, and manage today's collaboration network. First, we begin with understanding the architecture. So if you look and look at this architecture, you have various applications grouped into uh, kind of like a category. You will need to learn how e what each one of these applications does and how to deploy them in different models, such as on-premise, cloud, and hybrid. Or you can learn how to combine both. Once you understand the deployment model and the various elements of the collaboration solutions that are examined, you will then move into things like high availability, capacity planning, licensing, and most importantly, disaster recovery for backup and restore, and of course, security. Now, during security, we will explore things like how to, uh, the requirement for certificates, how to encrypt and decrypt the uh, communications, uh, understanding the certificate trust list or CTL, or identify trust list or ITL. We're, we will look into various ways of generating certificates and obtain certificate from real organizations to ensure that our validity, our certificate is secure to, tr to make sure that people can trust us. We will then turn our attention on the collaboration systems heart, heart of the collaboration system, which is dial plan, uh, including uh, element, including endpoint addressing, call routing, path selection, digit manipulation, and calling privileges. We're gonna wrap up this section by discussing about network protocol, codec that are gonna be used, what are the protocol gonna be uh, required for various requirements, and how existing network protocol can be used to fulfill your collaboration solution. Now, it is always good to watch videos like this. However, it is also recommend that you should spend as much as time possible understanding the Cisco documentation and being able to dig information from the Cisco website. So please take a look at the SRND guide, which is kind of an architectural book that allows you to understand the entire in and out of how Cisco collaboration application talks to each other, 
uh, how each component will operate at a very detailed level. Now, once you have that, we're going to first start with our overview of Cisco Collaboration Solution Architect. Now, in this scenario, uh, we're going to look at the various applications in uh, different categories. So the foundation, again, which you have laid out is where all the components are deployed. You need to understand what each component does. So if you take a look at this scenario, the component that we have are categorized into different different categories, such as call control, messaging, conferencing, uh, edge, uh, and then of course you got the endpoint. Now call control, which is your uh, probably one of the most important one, right about if you look at right here, contain two or three different products. You got Cisco Unified Communication Manager, often known as call manager, or you have um, sometimes they're known as CUCM, or you can call it a call control device. So it's totally up to you. So what is the role of that call control device? Well, first of all, that is your IP-based PVX or private branch exchange. It is there to provide registration, call processing, resource management, instant messaging, and of course, presence for users and endpoint. It also encompasses the remote site survivability so that if you have a branch office can register to the head office and yet provide some sort of service should your branch office lose connections by using a Cisco router as a mini call manager or IP-based PBX. Now, conferencing. Now, as you know, that during this pandemic that we are passing through worldwide, a lot of people are working from home. Uh, pe some people are by working from home by choice. Some people are working from home by force due to their government reg reg uh, restrictions. So to be able to do that, they're using some sort of conferencing tool to communicate with their co colleagues or your team members. Students are working, starting from home. They are joining in the class using some sort of online webinar uh, or uh, online conferencing or meeting services. And it's, it's student instru instructors are sharing their labs or just lectures through the conference solutions. So a lot of company could be you deploying their own conference solutions from going forward. Conferencing, which allows three or more parties to communicate via voice, video, and content sharing in a real time. Resource can either be on-premise, such as a Cisco meeting server, server on, on your data center, or hosted using Cisco WebEx software. So we'll talk about WebEx in more details in our separate course, as well as a separate module in this particular course. If you are working from home, then you gotta have a secure, a secure way to register your phone or your endpoint, or have a, some sort of phone that can work with your call manager, which is residing inside your organization. To do that, in the older days, we used to use things like Cisco VPR, not Cisco, but any VPN or virtual private network. Now, a problem with the virtual private network that you have to worry about overhead, speed, bandwidth problem, encryption, decryption issues. A lot of companies and countries are uh, end up blocking VPN for whatever reason. You may have be in a hotel who is using a router that does not allow VPN traffic to go through. So to solve that problem, you would use something called Cisco Collaboration Edge or Expressway C and E. Expressway C and E are used to provide that sort of secure way to register your endpoint from outside, for such as your hotel or your home, to your organization as if you're sitting inside the office, seamlessly. You will also look at voice messaging. Cisco Unity Connection provide unified messaging and voicemail services. If someone leaves a voicemail to you, then if you're not there, you could listen to that message later or have that message come to you as an email should you integrate in your Microsoft Exchange or email server with your Unity Connections. Unity Connection is a very popular feature, especially in North America. Canada and US, we love our voicemail, voicemail features. I mean, if you don't have a voicemail, we're considered to be Stone Age. So therefore, it is important that if you are in North America or working in any of the countries or companies here, you're gonna probably gonna face uh, integration with the voicemail services. Unity Connection not only can be used for voicemail services, but it can to, it can also be used for things like auto attendant, uh, network announcement, uh, IVR based platform. 
limited, but very, very uh, easy to configure. Now, when it comes to mass deployment or installation or managing uh, multiple companies from a, a you know a central location, you want to use some sort of network tools that allows you to do ease of deployment. Cisco Prime Collaboration Deployment is that tool. It's a central tool, a virtual machine, our application running on virtual machine that you would log in. And from there, you can do a deployment of call manager or CUCM or other application into hundreds of company around the globe, providing that, providing that you have access to the servers. It allows you to perform tasks such as migration from the older version, 11.5 to 12.5, uh, example. It allows you to, uh, you know, add new virtual machines or cluster servers to the existing clusters. Allows you to do an upgrade without even interfering. You can set up 10 different clusters in one hour, let it execute at night. By the time you come in morning, you will have a cluster of call managers deployed all over those 10 locations. So the prime collaboration deployment is an extremely useful tool if you're doing a mass installation and deployment within your organization. If you're a company like System Integrator, inter Integrator who does that. Now, licensing is in Cisco provided by using a tool called Cisco Smart Software Manager, SSM, which is a web portal that communicates with Cisco website to license your product. We'll talk more details about that as we go through this particular course. Now, just like how you have a central tool for de automated deployment, you also have a central tool for automated de configuration deployment. In this case, let's say you have a branch office. If, if you're a bank and you have a multiple branch office, you have a new branch office coming in and you want to deploy the same configuration that you have for other branch office to the new one. Instead of repeating the task, you can create a central template using Cisco Prime Collaboration provisioning tools. You can then deploy those configuration. Prime collaboration provisioning is used for user and device provisioning and simplify move and add and changes. Security is gonna be one of the most important topic in this particular course. We're gonna have a dedicated uh, chapter that is focused on that for how to secure your network for unauthorized access, toll fraud protection, certificate generation, management, and provisioning and enabling encryption for all component within your network. Of course, you need to also manage your bandwidth in order to ensure that you have a high quality traffic so that it do not, you know, each certain type of data, data traffic does not overwhelm the voice traffic. To do that, we're gonna use QoS, call admission control, and video rate adaptation and resiliency mechanism to provide such future, uh, feasibility. So it is important that you understand your network very well from in and out to be able to do that. Now, you also need to be able to size your network. Cisco does provide you various tools that are available to decide how big your network should be, what type of servers you need, how many trunks you need. So you have a sizing tools or services available from Cisco website. So that is your, our first int, uh, uh, video about the overview of the architecture. In the next video, we're going to focus on the deployment model.